Halo Infinite PC requirements have been revealed. We get a better idea on when we will see campaign gameplay. And scalpers ruin everything again for everybody. Want to know more? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So after the big news drop of Halo Infinite's release date, new controller, new console, and things like that, it was a great day to be a Halo fan. But it turns out we have some more news coming out for us as well. It comes with PC requirements, some updates, and when we guys see some campaign gameplay, and some other things that you can buy when it comes to pre-ordering Halo Infinite. So if you guys like these news and informational kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as a wrap up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe right there. Let's get right into the content. So let's start off with the big piece of news that the PC requirements have been revealed on the Steam webpage here, guys, showcasing the minimum and recommended specs. And the recommended specs seem pretty dang high. But let's get to the minimum first. What do you at least need to play Halo Infinite? Showcasing the AMD FX8370, as well as an Intel i5-4440, or the kind of CPUs you need, at least eight gigabytes of RAM, and also with comes with graphics cards, an AMD RX 570 or an NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti. Another interesting thing to take note of, 50 gigabytes for available space is all you need for this game. Now, this could be something maybe more involved with the campaign side of things. For it to be 50 gigabytes for the entire game, I'd find it to be rather small. I have a feeling that with Halo Infinite on this page, I think they're more referencing to the campaign and what's needed for the specs of that particularly, because when you go into here, you can see that it's, you can still add to your car for $60 as you would expect for a normal price game. It also says pre-purchase the Halo Infinite campaign specifically. They don't really mention anything about the multiplayer side of things, so I think the campaign itself is going to be 50 gigabytes in size, which honestly sounds about right for current day gaming. This 50 gigabyte size might also include the 4K textures that are gonna be involved with this game, so that would really bloom the size of the game. If we have the option to not download the 4K textures, that would be really nice and help reduce file size. We could do that at Call of Duty Black Ops, Cold War. I like to see that with Halo Infinite. Now your recommended specs, they get the ideal kind of performance and idea of what you would like to see so for this game so you want an amd ryzen 7 3700x which is a really high-end cpu as well as an intel i7 9700k again very high-end pc cpus right here 16 gigabytes of ram where if you're playing on a gaming pc most likely you probably have at least 16 gigabytes of ram i personally have 32 so we're all good there and ram's pretty cheap to come around when it comes to graphics cards, they mentioned a Radeon RX 5700 XT or an NVIDIA RTX 2700, which honestly, I think like a RTX 2700 is probably going to be like the new standard when it comes to this next generation of gaming, kind of like how the 1080 series became for the last generation. Though also keep in mind that you know, we actually had a chance to play the tech preview, which was only multiplayer side of things, but from my experience that I was roughly getting about like 60 frames playing on like medium settings and with my 1080 Ti at 1440p getting roughly 60 frames and they said that there was actually a configuration issue with that performance where it seemed like it was actually really limiting PCs and so we should see with the next flight a 20% increase when it comes to performance which I'm all for. I mean I really didn't have that much of an issue when it came to playing the game on PC with my 1080 Ti but we'll see how the campaign is because that's gonna be a completely different beast but it's quite interesting to say that the minimum specs are like an NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti where community manager Unishek said this that they acknowledged the GTX 900 issues and those are apparently going to be resolved hopefully by the next flight. Obviously there's going to be people on PC trying to play with a 900 series card, so it's good to see that 343 is trying to take those people into consideration and fix their issues that they might be having where a card might be underperforming. It just seemed like when I first read this tweet that like the 900 series cards are probably going to be like the low value of what you would need for this game. Uh, but it seems like you're gonna need at least a 1050 Ti. And with the 2700 being the recommended card, it makes me think that ray tracing will be involved with Halo Infinite, at least eventually at some point. Uh, we haven't heard any confirmation after this delay if ray tracing is gonna be there at launch. It didn't look like it was an option within the PC version that I was playing on, though the option might only be available if your card is capable of doing that. From my experience though, I'm just hoping that play the game at like 1440p, 60 FPS with my Ryzen 7 2700 and my GTX 1080 Ti, I'll be happy with that, 100%. Now when it comes to seeing some campaign gameplay, we 
didn't really get any of that at Gamescom, which the last time we actually saw some campaign gameplay of Halo Infinite was actually technically in the August update that video that they posted, these little quick snippets of what the campaign was looking like, but we need like some actual campaign gameplay, which we haven't had since the reveal back in 2020. And Sketch actually replied to Hidden Xperia about this as well, where Hidden Xperia talked about saying like the trailer that we saw for Gamescom season one of Halo Infinite multiplayer looked fantastic. It really made us want to get into the story. It would make us wish, man, I wish you could see some campaign stuff. Sketch replied back saying, I love that video. So happy to finally share it in its entirety. Does a great job of setting up season one. And to be fair, we did say last Friday, it'd be a bit before we come up for air to show off more campaign, but it will happen. Well, it's definitely good to know that at least like we will see some campaign that at least is going to be the intention of the team at 343 they're like we will see campaign gameplay but when we don't really know i mean we have until december 8th to see something i have a feeling it might be likely tied to some kind of marketing as well as campaign moments are generally much more bombastic and much more cinematic something much more easy to share like in a trailer to get people excited about the game as the marketing for halo infinite is really just getting started and plus we still have another tech preview to go through as well so i wouldn't really expect much anytime soon but probably maybe in october probably we're on that holiday season to get people excited about video games excited about xbox excited about Halo Infinite is when we'll really start seeing that marketing pop up probably like a month or two before release. And talking about getting excited for the release and marketing things like that, we obviously know there's a new Xbox limited edition Halo Infinite version, but it looks like scalpers have ruined this as well already on eBay. You can see the scout prices of these Halo Infinite consoles because they're already sold out. All of them, gone. Same with the Halo Infinite controller as well. The Master Chief controller is completely sold out. Again, scalpers take their time to ruin everything for everybody else, sadly. But there are some other kind of things you can check out as well when it comes to pre-ordering Halo Infinite, which is something I really wanted to share with you guys as well. Where if you take a look on the Best Buy webpage here, you actually have a little bit of a pre-order option you can have right here. If you kind of scroll down a bit, Take a look at the overview here, and obviously it tells you pretty much everything to expect about Halo Infinite and stuff like that. All the stuff that's coming with the game. But the really cool thing is it showcases a Halo Infinite DLC bonus pre-order DLC awesomeness rare. Now it's a really small picture, kind of hard to see. But you look at it in high res, this is what you're actually looking at here. You get a weapon and armor coding as well as a nameplate on top of that. Now, if you really want to confuse your classic Halo fans, just wear this skin. It's just straight blue, you know? <laughs> Though not gonna lie, that coding for the weapon does look pretty freaking cool. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna pre-order this game at all. I'm just gonna get off of Steam most likely, or actually just probably just download it from the Xbox Game Pass version as well. But it's good to know at least like that version of like a Best Buy, if you want to spend your money there, make sure you pre-order to get yourself some new coatings and emblems and stuff like that, which is pretty freaking awesome last thing to talk about when it comes to halo awesomeness gear that you can purchase razor just posted this as well where essentially you got their one of their headsets it's coming out in october in 2021 that's a halo infinite unsc headset as well so pretty exciting stuff if you guys want to check that out again if you want to spend your money there you can again also with razor they do have a mouse and keyboard if i remember correctly as well that's supposed to be kind of like halo infinite themed on top of that so that's another option for you guys to check out as well so that's all the halo news i got for you guys if you missed any content from me recently got a playlist right here to link you all to my halo infinite news i've been uploading daily about so thank you so much for watching greatly appreciate it i'll catch you on the next one Peace out.